Hi, we are Solid Energy, and we are reinventing batteries. My name is Dr. Chi Chao Hu. I recently invented a breakthrough revolutionary technology, and I just got my PhD from Harvard Applied Physics, and I've been working on lithium batteries for five years. This is my business partner, Louis Barrel. He's getting his MBA from Harvard Business School. In addition, we also have two fantastic advisors. Our scientific advisor, Professor Don Sadowitz at MIT, he's the Don of energy storage. He also invented several cutting-edge battery, uh, battery technologies. We also have Bill Olet, our business advisor. He's the director of the MIT Clean Energy Prize. In addition, we have two other team members, both from MIT. Imagine a world where your laptop lasts longer. Today, a typical laptop lasts eight hours. So you fly from Boston to San Francisco. Maybe. I don't know. Do, do any of your laptops last that long? Well, my, mine doesn't. Now, imagine a laptop lasts 16 hours. Solid energy lets you fly from Boston to Beijing on a single charge. Imagine your electric car goes farther. We're both from Boston, and let's say we want to visit our grandma. A, test, a Nissan Leaf gets you from Boston to Worcester. <laughs> <laughs> a Tesla Roadster will get you to New York City. Solid energy gets you to grandma's house. 500 miles on a single charge. So what are the two biggest problems with batteries today? Well, one is safety. They blow up. <laughs> Second is energy density. They simply don't last long enough. So let's start with safety. If you look at temperature uh, scale from minus 40 degrees Celsius to 250 degrees Celsius, the typical lithium ion batteries, the ones made by A123, uh, LG Chem, Panasonic, the usual suspects, they work well at room temperature, but they become explosive at high temperatures. So if you put them in a car, you really need a cooling system to prevent that explosion. Then there are startups like Seal that make solid polymer batteries. They are safer at high temperatures, but they don't work well at room temperature. So they need to be heated in order to operate. Solid energy works over the entire temperature range, from minus 40 degrees Celsius to 250 degrees Celsius. No cooling system, no heating system. It just works. Now let's look at energy density, which is basically how long your battery can last. If you look at what the big companies and, and the startups are doing in terms of watt hours per kilogram, A123 is about 100 watt hours per kilogram. Panasonic, which is used in Tesla and the majority of consumer electronics today, and then LG Chem, which is used in the Chevy Volt, they are about 200. And then Steel, the startup, they achieved 350. And then Envia, which recently made a lot of headlines because they broke the world record of 400 watt hours per kilogram. Pretty impressive what they did. Well, solid energy can potentially exceed 800 watt hours per kilogram. This is twice that of the state of the art. Four times what's currently used in consumer electronics and, and EVs, and eight times that of A123. So how do we do it? Well, we invented an electrolyte material that allows you to use the highest energy density cathode and anode safely and effectively in your battery. So solid energy solves the two biggest problems, energy density and safety. Our energy density is 2 to 4x that of any competing lithium batteries. Our batteries can safely operate from minus 40 degrees Celsius to 250 degrees Celsius. And because of this temperature stability, you don't need cooling system or heating system. And that's about 20% of the cost and weight of the battery pack. It's also 100% safe. It doesn't contain any volatile or flammable materials. It has the potential to cycle more than 5,000 times. And also in terms of cost, dollars per kilowatt hour, we're talking about a quarter that of a Chevy Volt battery. And my favorite part is that it can be manufactured using existing facilities. So we don't have to spend hundreds of millions of dollars building a new manufacturing plant. We can use the existing infrastructure available. This is a revolutionary battery technology. And we are calling it PEEL, Polymer Ionic Liquid Rechargeable Battery. And actually, I have one here. This is a working coin cell that we made in the lab with the, the PEEL chemistry. So what have we achieved so far in the lab? We've achieved 100 cycles at 700 watt hours per kilogram. We've achieved 500 cycles at 350 watt hours per kilogram, all at room temperature, 100% depth of discharge. And these batteries are still cycling. They still have about 80% of the capacity left. And we also measure the conductivity from minus 40 degrees Celsius to 250 degrees Celsius. So how do we do it? Well, let me tell you a little more about PEEL, which is a technology that I invented at MIT. So if you look at traditional lithium ion battery, you have a cathode, electrolyte, and anode. Our innovation is in a two-layer electrolyte system. And this design allows you to put the highest energy density cathode and the highest energy density anode, which is a lithium metal, safely in a battery. 
Also, our design eliminates the need for a separator, which is about 20% of the cost of the, 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 the full cell. And we also, we also use safe and high performance electron materials, such as a polymer and ion liquid. And that's what gives you the wide temperature stability. And also, if you look at the landscape of battery industry, the majority of the other battery companies, they focus on cathodes. It's a very competitive space. People come up with new materials with marginal improvements every year. We don't do cathodes. We focus on the electrolyte. But our electrolyte is compatible with existing and emerging cathodes that other companies are working on. And there are two MIT patents that are currently affiliated with this technology. One was issued, and I just filed a provisional recently. And we're working with Google and Proctor uh, to negotiate with the technology licensing office for the exclusive license. So Chi Chow told you about the technology. I'm going to tell you about the business side. The market for batteries is $100 billion and growing. There's some really big markets out there. Consumer electronics is projected to be a $50 billion market. Electric vehicles is projected to be a $40 billion market by 2020. And that's just the tip of the iceberg when we think about potential electric vehicle adoption. But we're not starting there. Our beachhead market is in downhole drilling batteries, a $200 million market today. But we're starting there because of the extremely high price point that they receive for these batteries. You can see here that they're, um, that they're receiving about five times as much compared to consumer electronics, and nearly 10 times as much compared to electric vehicles. This will enable us to achieve much higher gross margins and get to profitability much more quickly. So let me tell you how these batteries work downhole. They're primarily used in two applications, measure wall drilling and logging wall drilling. This is for downhole data collection and ge geological sensing um, information. The batteries that they use today are called lithium thionyl chloride. They're a non-rechargeable battery. They only work up to 150 degrees cel uh, Celsius, and they're not safe. They're a hazmat item. They can't be airlifted. They have to be shipped or transported by ground. And because of the very intense vibrations, shocks, and high temperatures in the in downhole, they tend to explode. Our battery, on the other hand, is completely safe, up to 250 degrees Celsius, and it's rechargeable. Just a little bit about the economics. So when, when we think about these battery-related incidents that happen several times a year. It's going to take about two days to pull up the equipment, replace the batteries, and re replace the sensing equipment. If we look at rig rates for onshore, that's about $50,000 a day. But offshore, that could be up to a million dollars a day. Then, we're, then we need to replace the equipment. That could cost another million dollars. So we're looking at about a $3 million battery-related event. Also, the ability of our batteries to operate at temperatures above 150 degrees Celsius really opens up new high pressure and high temperature wells. We've talked to engineers, drilling engineers at BP, and they've told us that they would easily pay 10 times as much if we opened up the opportunity to drill new wells. Our batteries are also rechargeable. This solves two big problems. One, they can be recharged up hole in low temperature environments to really ensure that you have a fully charged battery going down hole. And they can be recharged down hole, completely eliminating the need to, to pull up all the equipment just for battery replacement. And our, our research is already being funded by a major oil field service company, so we know this customer pain is significant. As we look forward, we're looking at consumer electronics and electric vehicles. So in consumer electronics, the customer pain is really centered around energy density. Your devices don't last long enough with the increased performance requirements that are necessary for your applications. And the devices are trying to get thinner and thinner. So if we think about the iPad 3 that was recently released, the iPad 3 is actually 7% greater in volume than the iPad 2. This is directly a result of a 77% increase in battery volume. The batteries aren't getting good enough quickly enough. Our battery can give you four times the energy density with the same size, or we can d deliver you an equal amount of energy in a fourth the package. Electric vehicles have some different customer pains when we're thinking about range anxiety, cost, and safety. In terms of rain, range anxiety is one of the major things that are slowing electric vehicle adoption. People are feel for, fearful that their electric vehicles won't be able to drive far enough. Our batteries can deliver electric vehicles that drive over 500 miles, significantly farther than electric vehicles today. Or we could give you an economy electric vehicle that is price competitive to today's internal, internal combustion engines because our batteries can be delivered more cheaply. Safety is also a big issue. This is a picture of the Chevy Volt uh, thermal fin system. This is what's needed using today's batteries to make sure that the batteries are staying cool. All in, these costs account for about 20% additional on top of the batteries and also about 20% of the volume. Our batteries completely eliminate this need. They're safe up to 250 degrees Celsius. 
So we, we really believe that we solve the problems that are really slowing electric vehicle adoption, and we think that can have a significant impact in terms of CO2 emissions going forward. How are we going to do this? So what we're going to do is we're going to produce and sell the electrolyte ourselves. That's our special sauce, and we'll, that helps us maintain quality and ensure the IP as trade secret going forward. And then we're going to partner with specialized battery manufacturers such as Saft, Electrochem, and Eagle Pitcher to really get our batteries manufactured quickly and get to the customers uh, more rapidly and get to revenue. They already have the relationships with the oil field service companies that we need. So then looking forward, we're going to have, to consumer electronics, we have a similar model where we produce the electrolyte ourselves. But in this model, we're going to outsource the manufacturing to larger manufacturers to help us achieve the large scale. We believe we can do this for two reasons. First, our manufacturing process slots directly into the existing manufacturing process of lithium ion batteries. And second, there's currently a four to five times overcapacity in the lithium um, ion battery manufacturing industry. But then we're going to own the relationship with the consumer electronics OEMs, and we're going to sell the battery under the solid energy brand. We have a similar model in electric vehicles, but what changes here, we need to partner much earlier with the electric vehicle manufacturers to make sure that we're de designing a whole battery system that really meets the performance specifications of the electric vehicle manufacturers. And we've already been in discussions with Tesla, Toyota, and GM, and they've asked us to send our battery samples. So one of the big questions about this is cost. How can you deliver such a great battery? How much is it going to cost? So our secret sauce, like I said, is in the electrolyte. If we look at traditional batteries, about 10% of the cost today is in the electrolyte. But we believe we can deliver a battery about half the price on a dollar per kilowatt hour basis. So what I've got up here is our actual price projections from our supplier of where our electrolyte will cost at scale. And using these actual price projections, we believe we can hit these numbers. In terms of financials, um, I'd like to highlight a few things for you. We believe that we'll get to nearly $40 million of revenue by year five, looking at $70 million of revenue by six. This is about 30% gross margins. At, and you can see here, um, the numbers you see here are just for the downhole drilling market. This doesn't even account for potential battery sales and consumer electronics and electric vehicles down the road. These are minimal market share numbers, which we believe that we can achieve as customers begin to adopt our product. We believe we'll hit cash flow break even sometime in year five. And we're looking at about 20 employees, about a 150 to 250,000 per month burn rate, about $15,000 per month per person. So how do we build this battery technology? Well, we start by looking for low cost suppliers for raw materials. And then we want to test the, the wide temperature stability and the high energy density in small coin cells. And then we want to scale that to a bigger form factor, such as a cylindrical cell. And within a year, we believe we'll have a working prototype for the oil drilling market. And as we enter EV and consumer electronics, we need to improve the cycle life. And we also need to uh, scale that to bigger form factors, such as a prismatic cell. And by 2016, we believe we'll have a working prototype for consumer electronics and EV market. And then we'll outsource the manufacturing. And so we're asking for $6 million for our A round. That A round is going to be tranched between an A1 and an A2 round. The A1 round is $2.5 million. That money is going to go $1 million to building our own battery lab. And then we're going to focus on some key hires. We need a CEO with experience building and leading early stage technology companies and a VP of engineering with battery manufacturing expertise. Then we're going to hire scientists to really start building and testing our commercial prototypes. As we look forward to our B round, we're going to be looking for $10 million, and that's to set up a pilot commercial, um, a pilot commercial manufacturing facility. And we're solid energy, and we're reinventing batteries. <laughs>